Hi guys, and welcome back. Today's coaching session is gonna be talking about leveraged prospecting. So I've had a number of our team talk about when do I do certain aspects of prospecting? When, when is it um, more appropriate to do one activity followed by another? And we call that leveraged prospecting or another term uh, that's often been used is working in campaign. It's what we're trying to do is to maximize the results we get from each activity. And a lot of people feel that when they first start in real estate that they need to be doing a little bit of uh, uh, telemarketing in a certain uh, farm area of their, of their patch and then do some letterbox dropping in another a patch of their uh, farm area. And that's the, the, the absolute wrong thing to be doing. You need to be working and leveraging one activity after the other. And I, and I, and I draw it up like this um, for our team. So let's just pretend this box here represents a letterbox drop. A letterbox drop in your marketplace. Could be a thousand homes, could be 1500, could be 2000. Whatever it is, when you first start in real estate, make sure you select a service area. Now, without going into too much detail, you should have what I call two prospecting activities uh, in, in real estate. And that's your service area when you're brand new and also your, um, uh, your database. And they're two uh, pipeline uh, funnels, as you may say, um, in regards to generating leads. So your database and of course your um, service area. So in this particular instance, we're gonna be talking about service area. So you're doing a letterbox drop, say once every fortnight, once every week when you first start, at the very least once every month in your service area of a thousand homes. Now, when you, when you do that, you should be following that up with a phone call within the area. So what happens there if you do a phone call, so you've letterbox dropped your, your area and then you continue to do a letterbox drop the following uh, fortnight or the following month, but you add a phone call to it. That's gonna give more weight to the initial letterbox drop. Okay, so if, if we looked at a service area Right, and we said there's 100 homes here and 100 homes there. And one week, in week one, we uh, letterbox dropped this area and then we made phone calls um, in the same week in this area. You're diluting your efforts. You're far better off working only in this 100 home patch and adding the phone call to it in the same week. Does that make sense? Because when you're, when you're uh, just think about it, if you're a, a, a potential seller in your, in your street, you receive a letterbox drop, uh, you see your, your details, and then a couple of days later, it might be followed up with a phone call. It's just leveraging the power of that, uh, that letterbox drop, that impact that that, let, uh, that initial uh, marketing activity had followed up with a phone call. Whereas if you phone called uh, 100 people, uh, 100 homes in a, um, in a different area, you're not gonna get that same impact. It's just a phone call. It's not being backed up by a, a letterbox drop. And then it continues further. So this could be week one, this could be week two. Week three, right, or month three, or every two weeks, it's, 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 your, it's your consistency that's important. You do a letterbox drop, you may do a phone call in, in the street, but you've also achieved a for sale board, okay? So in week three, in a particular patch, they've received another letterbox drop. They may have received a phone call or another prospecting activity, but there's a for sale board, okay? Now that has suddenly amplified the impact that this letterbox drop is having and also the phone call. Because the phone call will be a phone call with a purpose, and the phone call will be just led in the local neighborhood, we've just listed X, Y, Z um, in your local area, or some, uh, some information. The for sale board, then, then in week four, you'll still have a generic letterbox drop, you'll still have a possible phone call. Again, it's not gonna be phone calls every single time, but just for the sake of this example, it'll be a phone call. The for sale board will still be there, but then you could possibly add it with a home open invite. 
So again, all this activity here, it's the same activity, but suddenly the impact is getting greater from that activity because it's been leveraged by everything else. And then the home open invite will have a much higher impact as well. Okay, and then in week five, it could be you're still doing those traditional prospecting activities, right? There's actually gonna be a home open, there's gonna be a pointer board out in the street, and you might actually even do a door knock. So a pointer board or a door knock. Can you see that when you're working in campaign or leveraging all your prospecting one after the other, each prospecting activity has a greater impact than, than working that prospecting activity in isolation. I hope that makes sense. Uh, another thing that we do, uh, which, which follows on with the leverage prospecting, is what we call our Magic 25. Now, our Magic 25, this is another way of looking at leverage prospecting, is a series of letters that we use when, as soon as we list a property within the street. The first letter that goes out is uh, just appraised. Now, this is a really important, so let's just pretend you've gone to a street, you've just listed a property, you've got the authority in your hot little hand. You and I know it will take a couple of days before, uh, before ordering a photo board or preparing the paperwork to get a stock board up there before the neighbours will know that you've actually listed a property in the street. So we get our team to do a just appraised. You only do it when you've got the authority in your hot little hand, because the last thing you want to be doing is dropping just appraise on every appraisal that you do, and then your competition, of course, wins that listing. It won't look good. So just appraise, just, and we call them magic 25s, because we do say magic to, uh, a, a minimum of 25 homes around that property. Number two, yeah, of course, is you're just listed. Okay, and again, this could be either a letterbox drop or a door knock. Number three would be um, home open invite. Okay, so for neighbors to come to the first open for inspection. Number four could be buyers looking. Okay, so what happens, and depending on the marketplace, and we're certainly not this, we're not really experiencing this in our marketplace because our days on market are between 10 and 20 days. So, where you'd normally use a buyer still looking um, letter after the campaign. But if you've got extended days on market in your marketplace, and sometimes the resistance of vendors to actually meet the market, and you've had a heap of buyers through a home open, it's a great idea to do a buyer still looking letter, just to inform the local neighbours that you've actually had activities. For example, it could be on the market for, the, for three to four weeks, you've had 20 groups through, but the, the, the vendor and the market are a little bit apart in regards to price. So that you still wanna be telling the local neighbours who are probably thinking, Oh, have they selected the right agent? Have they chosen, uh, are they priced too high? What, what's happening with the property? So if you, if you inform the local neighbors that you've had 30, 30 groups through or 20 groups through and they're still looking, the current properties don't meet their needs, you may be able to pick up um, another listing, uh, piggybacking off your first one, buyer's still looking. Then of course, you've got the under contract letter, then number six is sold. Now, that is an absolute gold. This is, the, this is where magic happens. And we talked, we're talking about leveraged, a sold board with a sold sticker and then a sold um, a letterbox drop and or door knock has massive impact in the marketplace. And if you've leveraged it with all these and you've provided that immediate information to your immediate surrounding properties, that is absolute gold. You must work that as much as possible. And number seven is uh, once the board goes down, you've just lost that bit of branding out there in the marketplace, but welcome new neighbors. And that's a great one, just to keep in contact. And with the Welcome New Neighbours, we still have some buyers looking um, in the area to meet their needs. So that whole, uh, that whole structure of what we call our Magic 25 series of letters 
enables you to leverage that one property. And everyone that's used it correctly and everyone that's followed it through has certainly picked up one, two, three listings from that uh, in 90% of cases. So just be aware that that's a really, really good strategy. Maybe 25 and it's working in campaign. And of course, the only one that you would add to there in, uh, for those people in those marketplaces that work in auctions, you'll obviously add um, invite to the auction. So that's the, the, our topic for today was uh, uh, leveraged prospecting. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you want a, a template of these letters, please private message us, uh, put a comment uh, below uh, in the Facebook post and uh, we'll get them out to you. Thank you guys.